as I was saying, the Whips have agreed that paragraph 15 of Executive Report Number 2, dealing with the Tooting Athletics Act, will be considered next. This paragraph is subject to a reference up amendment as set out on pages 47 and 48 of the agenda. I firstly call on Councillor Govinda to move reception of report number two. I now call on Councillor Cook to move paragraph 15 and Councillors Mrs. Leone Cooper and Anderson to move and second the amendment in their Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move paragraph 15. I'd like to formally move the motion. I'd like to second it. Thank you. I've agreed to a request from Councillor Jonathan Cook and Councillor Leone Cooper to speak, to, that they could speak for up to 10 minutes on this paragraph. So may I invite Councillor Anderson to speak? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, welcome to those members of the public who've come um, for this, with interest in this particular item. The Tooting Common Athletics Track, for those who don't know it, um, it's a track and a gym facility on the edge of uh, Tooting Common in the First Down Ward and on the boundary of the Bedford Ward. It's a much-valued service and a local success story. The Community Services Committee recommendation to change policy and to seek to have expressions of interest for a change of management by others is not some kind of benign options exercise that may be posited to us, but it's a real threat to keeping the track affordable and to keeping what is valued about this service. This motion notes the very justified public concern about these plans, stops the current move towards potential privatisation as not appropriate for this service, and returns us to the current council policy as it was before this committee recommendation, which was for the track anyway to be one of the many services in the new staff mutual from September 2015. It's a success story. As we've heard earlier this evening, user numbers are up. In the last two years, up at the, of the track of 33% and the gym of 54%, and operating costs are reducing. The trajectory is clear. Under the current management, it will keep increasing user numbers and reduce those operating costs while still being a very affordable and accessible local facility. And moving into the staff mutual is the right way for it to go forward. My neighbours are three of the children who use the track every weekend because they can afford the fees. They are absolutely sport crazy. The track is a big part of their life. And if it wasn't for these affordable fees, they wouldn't be able to go there. And this policy really is a risk to affordability. As the report to the committee says, the aims of this move are to seek a change to the management for these three reasons. To maintain the quantity and provision of the track, gym and community toilets. To reduce the operating costs. And thirdly, to encourage innovation. There's no mention there of maintaining the affordability of the track whatsoever. And this is what's very concerning to people. Without making it much, much clearer and really spelling out how affordability can be kept in, first of all, the calls for expression of interest, then in the contracting of any future new management, and then in the long-term plans for managing that contract, then it is very clear that fees will be going up more than inflation in the next few years, and that is what is concerning residents. So the way this has been done is also of real concern. The track was on the list of potential cuts revealed in the leaked document during the summer and the issue of debate at the last council meeting that we had. We were told there that lots of things are always on lists, always up for debates. There's lots of potential change. We shouldn't read anything into these lists. However, the track clearly remained on the hit list during the summer and on October the 28th, there was a public announcement of plans to seek an alternative manager for the track. And these were announced as a way of safeguarding the track out of the blue. This caused widespread concern in the area of the people who love the track. They hadn't been notified. They hadn't been consulted. All the schools who use it, the Hernhill Harriers and others, they didn't realize that the track had needed to be safeguarded or saved. These were the scare tactics, really. 
Users and local groups should have been consulted at, and a public meeting should have been held far earlier in the process when all the secret um, drawing up of the papers was being done right back through the summer. We now know that the tracks at Battersea and Tooting were compared with a view to making one of them redundant potentially. Why not just explain this when it was happening and involve people in this conversation earlier? And now we're faced with a situation where how can a community group make a bid in such a short time? How can really all the options be on the table? How can the responses to a paper to committee by the Hernhill Harriers, for example, shape the proposal to the committee if they're only told about it once that paper is published one week before the committee meets? How can local schools, the main user group, be part of shaping the plan, for example, the affordability aspect, if again they weren't consulted? So now we have the question, how can we trust the next part of the process to be the really open, lovely options process that I'm sure we'll hear that it will be? This tender process is not appropriate for the track, and it's just a waste of time and money. And moving the track and the gym from being part of the bigger staff mutual plan, which will achieve the aim of reducing operating costs, is a mistake. I really hope to hear support for affordability and how that will happen from the Conservative speakers in this debate. And more clear assurances that affordability will be defined, quantified, built into plans from the track and defended from now onwards. I really hope that members can now reflect on this listen to the very widespread and reasonable public concern and support this motion to drop these plans to consider privatisation of the track management immediately. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kelly. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Well, I'm sad to say that this amendment and the opposition's campaign on tooting track is one of the reasons that people are so disillusioned with politics and politicians. The opposition have whipped up public concern over the future of the track, but the council are not proposing closing it, and have made that very clear from before the public meetings called to supposedly save it. It's just pure political opportunism. On October the 28th, as Councillor Anderson has said, the Council issued a press release, and I quote from it. Council officers are exploring possible new management proposals for the Tooting Beck Athletics track in a bid to secure its long-term future. It then goes on to say that the paper detailing the proposals will be discussed at the November 27th Overview and Scrutiny Committee. Labour's Save the Track from Closure campaign then launched on the 31st of October and a public meeting was held on November the 12th, about a week before the proposal papers were issued. Wouldn't it have been sensible to wait for the papers to come out before holding the meeting? Well, the answer, of course, the answer, of course, Quiet, please. is no, because the proposals in the paper are trying to safeguard the future of the track, and this doesn't fit with Labour's narrative. But whilst frustrating, such behaviour is ultimately irrelevant to the issue at hand, which is the future of the track. Labour still won't support these proposals, despite having supported the concept of seeking expressions of interest in the past, notably in the very successful case of the libraries. The facts are that this is a hugely popular and much valued local asset that no one in the council wants to close. It has been excellently run by council staff, and I would hope that the Shadow Mutual will make a bid to run it. But we need to make further savings over the next two years of around £50 million. The track costs just over £100,000 a year to run. It's also recently had a significant amount of money invested in it, making it an incredibly exciting and appealing sports venue. As a result, the Council would like to explore ways of managing the track to encourage innovative use and save money for the Council. No proposals have yet been made over how it will be run or who by. We simply want to see what interest is out there so that we can make an informed decision. Expressions of interest could come from a private for-profit company, the, the Shadow Staff Mutual, a not-for-profit organisation or a charity. 
But we don't know what operating model they might suggest or any of the other details. How can we make a rational decision on the best management structure in a vacuum of information? We don't know who might be interested or what they might offer. It may well turn out to be similar to the libraries where we managed to make significant savings, allowing us to keep libraries open where other councils had to close them. When I disagree with the opposition, I genuinely try and listen to their arguments and think about whether what they're saying is right. And I have to say on this one, I've read the Reference Up Amendment and I'm really struggling to believe that the opposition want us to refuse to explore possible options that might bring a better deal for track users and residents. I find it incredible that they would say to voters that we shouldn't even find out what's possible because it might clash with their ideological prejudices. I want the track to be affordable and available too and we discussed at the Overview and Scrutiny Committee in quite some detail ways that controls over charges could still be subject to council approval in the same way that they are in the libraries. And we agreed to continue consulting further with local stakeholders. And finally, the issue of the leaked document. Well, I have to say it's irrelevant to the merit or otherwise of the proposals considered here. But having said that, I just can't help pointing out that any organisation worth its salt should be considering a wide raft of different policies, including unpopular, unusual and blue sky ones before selecting the policies it wants to go forward with. What I care about is that what we have proposed is the right thing to do, so I would urge you all to vote down the amendment. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Jones? continue to consult that's amazing uh, uh, Tooting Beck Athletics Track and Gym in my ward of Fursdown is a unique and extremely well loved community asset that has served our community for 80 years school children are by far the most numerous users of this facility last year 42 local schools held their sports days and 21 schools held their athletics training classes there the children hail from all types of schools, private, state sector, as well as from schools catering for children with special needs. Only this track can give these children, whose schools lack these facilities, at access to athletics. Some local schools spend their pupil premium at the track. The goal of the pupil premium, as my colleagues will know, is to raise the attainment of disadvantaged pupils and close the gap between them and their peers. The track has also been home to Hernhill Harriers, thank you very much for coming, for 77 years and now also houses a satellite athletic club run by the Harriers and Garrett Park School, which brings young disabled children to receive training at the track from one of the club's coaches. As many of these 60,000 users will tell you, athletics is a sport disproportionately represented by the poorest in our communities. There's no expensive equipment necessary, just access to an affordable track. They will also tell you that athletics has the potential to be transformative in the lives of all young people. Please excuse the pun, but currently this track really does provide a level playing field for all, regardless of income. It is a unique community asset in the truest sense of the term, not a commercial going concern like many other leisure facilities in the, in the borough where profit can, I concede, absolutely and sometimes should be a principal driver. It is not ripe for investment. So, our community is concerned to learn that the management of the track is being offered up to an external provider with the stated aim of reducing operating costs. The Harriers themselves, I'll tell you what's wrong, the Harriers themselves are not convinced significant further savings can be made at the track. And nor are we. We are concerned that a private provider would not be able to make the track profitable while maintaining the access school children currently have at prices they can afford. We are deeply concerned that the proposals 
to seek external bidders make no mention of affordability when this is so critical to this facility. Indeed, the Council is unable to confirm if affordability will even form part of the expressions of interest criteria. Much of this concern has stemmed from a lack of consultation and can be eased if consultation takes place before and not after any decisions are made. I applaud the Council for consulting Hernhill Harriers, but no other local group and crucially not a single school was consulted on the plan before it was put to committee, despite schools providing three times the income to the track that Hernhill Harriers does. First Down is a close community with established community groups, making consultation in this part of the borough really straightforward. The Friends of Tooting Common, the Tooting Common Mac, they're routinely consulted on all other matters relating to the common. And indeed the First Down Community Network, they all represent the views of local people but were not consulted. In the absence of any consultation, 2,800 people have signed a petition to keep the track open and affordable. 200 people turned out at a rally in support and some 50 local residents attended an open meeting to discuss its future. A deputation representing the meeting's views attended the committee asking for consultation. The community is engaged in this campaign, but the council is disengaged with the community. This is not a question of left or right, or even of politics. It is a question of good governance. Good governance. It is a question of showing that you are not the elected dictatorship that your former colleague, C Councillor Grimston, describes you as. It is a question of consulting in order to ensure that any, decision, now, that any decision regarding the, the, the track is evidence-based rather than ideologically motivated. At the open meeting on the track's future, we were told by right. a Tory councillor that Councillor Jones, I have asked you once, will soon. you kindly now draw your marks? And that okay. means a final council, statement. My final remarks. The council needs no, to not prove remark, them wrong. One remark. And uh, this is one remark. And consult the school children, the athletes, the petitioners, and the community before making any decision that will affect this valuable amenity. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Mrs. Dunn. Goodness. Right. Well, I promise not to shout. I promise not to shout. I'm sorry. Is it a. a uh, Councillor Hart just, just said something, and, and just as a, a point of personal explanation, um, I just think we should try and not be quite as insulting as a couple of our meetings, the community services have descended to, uh, and, and I hope, Mr Mayor, that we can rely on you to enforce that. Thank you. Right. Councillor Dunn, please. Um, as I was saying, um, I won't shout. Um, now, the minority party... Um, in this council. Councillor Jones, would you kindly switch off your microphone, please? Um, embodied, actually, by Councillor Jones, would have you believe that this debate is all about cuts and closures, specifically closure, to the Tooting Athletics track? Excuse me, I'm speaking. You've had your turn. Now, it isn't, actually. This is all about party politics. And, you know, let's be absolutely clear about this. This is all about the 2015 election. And we know that the Tooting MP has a small majority, and this is a party... I shall move on. We are talking about a general election. That's what I'm talking about. Don't butt in. But the fact is that this is politically motivated by the Labour Party to create a very useful campaign for Tooting MP Sadiq Khan to be able to stand on the soapbox and say, oh, the council are terrible, they're going to close Tooting Athletics Track, join my petition, sign my petition. Yes. Now, I mean, if you look on Street Life, I use Street Life, it's a public online forum, very active in my area. 31st of October, as Councillor Caddy pointed out, 
Up comes a posting from Sadiq Khan saying, now it looks as though our worst fears have been, have been realized. Wandsworth Council have announced cuts, 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 closure. If you actually look at what Wandsworth Council announced, it announced nothing of the sort. It announced that there was going to be a proposal to invite bids to come in to the council to look at ways of securing the long-term future of the athletics track. And this is what the majority party want. My colleagues all agree with me unanimously. We want to keep the track open. And this is all about thinking outside the box. This is finding new ways of doing things. Now, if you look at the library service, you look at GLL, that has been a really fantastic success story. But if you look at all sorts of other instances, I mean, I've read this reference up notice and it does yet again the same thing it gives a misleading impression to the public that all the sorts of campaigns for so-called closures have all ended in disaster now i know that this is a completely different scenario but battersea park zoo's on there now i know battersea park zoo i used to take my kids there when it was both a council-run zoo but also when it had, was run by a different operator. And I can tell you that the council made the correct decision to stop running it itself and to hand it over to an organisation that was more specialist, better at it, and it is now a better facility. I mean, I like taking kids there now. Very expensive. Very expensive. Now, I will come on to affordability because you have claimed time and time again that affordability has not been written into that. But Councillor Cook, let me finish. Councillor Cook has said a number of times on record, in fact, most recently at the 27th of November committee meeting, that affordability will be part of the bids pr process. And there you are going scaremongering again, telling people if it comes out of council run, let me finish, if it comes out of council run facilities, it will automatically be more expensive. Well, there's absolutely no proof that that will happen. There is this assumption by the minority party, and yes, you are the minority, just live with it. There is an assumption by you that if something is not run by the council and is run by some, in some other way, then it is state good and private bad. Well, please, get real. It's not that straightforward. It is not black and white. There are many shades of grey. There are, shush, you've had your say. There are many shades of grey. And Wandsworth Council has been innovative about looking at different ways of running services precisely in order to keep them open. And I will not take lessons from somebody who is new to this council who doesn't have the same understanding of how local council services are funded. Learn a bit more about what, the, what other examples are around. Now, there has been... I have not finished. You have said, had your say already. There has been consultation. I have received emails from the Tooting Map, which you quoted. Yes, they know. You do not draw your remarks to close, please. All right. Well, I will just say one last thing, which is don't cry wolf. The electorate are not stupid. If you continue to mount scaremongering campaigns like this, you will come a cropper. But what's more, you bring not only yourselves into disrepute, but all of us as well. You know, politicians are held in lower regard okay, even you. than estate agents. Well, you right. are not helping by mounting these sorts of campaigns. Right. I'm done. Councillor O'Brien. Yes, <laughs> please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Thank you for that, Councillor Darthal. That was excellent. Um, yes. I, um, I read this proposed amendment with interest, and in particular, in particular the, the noting of concern caused by the secret May paper, as it's described. And I certainly note the panic, chaos, and misinformation that it's whipped up. And I think what hasn't been said yet and deserves saying is that it really is a lesson in why it is generally not a good idea to leak confidential information, and an even worse one to rely on that information without getting your facts straight. Listening to um, the opposition, both in committee and, in t and tonight, 
and in what's in this amendment. It strikes me, I suppose, there's sort of three areas here, but it comes down to one fundamental point, which is they want something to be wrong. They're just not sure what it is, and they're going to keep changing their mind as to what's wrong until, hopefully, they get through. And I suppose that, firstly, we had, we're going to be closing the track. We had the Keep the Track Running campaign, the obligatory hallmark of any bandwagon, um, City Khan's photo attached to the, to the campaign. <laughs> and frankly, just the, the grossly irresponsible action that, that the others before me have already talked about. We know that closure is not going to happen. It's been very clear. So then they looked for something else. Then it was consultation. That was the real issue. It wasn't that it was going to close. It was, there was never any consultation. I have to say, again, having been at the committee, listened to what is proposed, perhaps I'm misunderstanding it. You know, let me know. There is no proposal. We're not making a decision here, and we did not make a decision in committee, to take any particular action with regard to the track. We're seeking expressions of interest, which will go out, they will come back, including the staff mutual, and then it will come back to committee to debate again. To go out and consult now would be a consultation on, on what? 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 Please, uh, Councillor. Councillor O'Brien speaking. And, and as we go out and consult on, on consult on that basis, and we are asked what are the options, our response will be we don't know yet because we haven't actually sought any expressions for interest. Well, that will probably whip up more concern, and we'll, it, it's also just an incredibly inefficient way to run a process. I, I would say, though, just at a very particular point of rebuttal, I think it was Councillor Anderson mentioned the staff mutual. And I, uh, you know, the, the, the staff of the track have done a fantastic job. The, there was a comment around the staff, not being given, the staff mutual not being given enough time to put in a proposal. But of course, they have more time than any other particular provider, given A, they've had a discussion about what's proposed, and B, no express, request for expression of interest have gone out yet. So, so actually, I'm not sure that's a valid point at all. So after consultation, then they decided, actually, the issue here is affordability. That, that is the real issue. That, that's what we'll get them on. But again, of course, both in the paper that came to us, so before we, we, dis we discussed it, there was a very clear, very clear reference to existing users no, being required. Pardon me? No mention of affordability. Which we then discussed at committee, which is the proper place to do that, and it's a shame that we have to discuss it again then. But we discussed it again at committee, and it was very clear that, um, and again it's mentioned in the paper, that safeguards could be built into the contract, that it could be specified that charges for similar, the, 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 uh, similar to those for similar facilities nearby could be included, that protections could be included. But there was no question that, it was, you know, that we weren't going to consider affordability, and we, and we will. I think the real, the real insult here, though, uh, I mean, Councillor Jones, I, I, I did agree with all the marvellous things you said about using in the track, and they are, you know, it is a great facility. That's why we'd like to keep it going. Not, not once was it mentioned, the part of the report, which very clearly states, if I read it out, future capital expenditure at the track estimates maintenance costs of 284,000 over the next 10 years, and in addition, funding of approximately 350,000 pounds to replace the eight-lane athletics track will be needed in the next five years. Not once meant that was mentioned, as against the considerable challenge of 50 million pounds of savings that needs to be found. We are trying to look now as to how we can secure the future of this track, not only for the existing users, but for future users, so that the track can be maintained for everyone going forward. And I, I really wish that you could come with us in trying to achieve that, rather than for looking for something which isn't there. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Leone Cooper. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Well, I think I'm going to start with the challenge that um, Councillor Broyne has just thrown out. Um, and I just need to remind him, although I don't think he was uh, on the council at the time, that I thought we had achieved uh, a measure of unity across this council on going forward in terms of the staff mutual. Look, um, we had three different areas that we wanted to focus on in terms of concern about this. One was the area of affordability. I'm not going to rehearse the arguments on affordability because I think we've already heard quite a lot about that this evening. 
The second area was the secrecy and the lack of consultation. And it is no good saying that we're crying wolf. It's no good saying this has all been whipped up by Sadiq Khan in October and so on and so forth. You know, the paper uh, and the officer who wrote it has, has told me that he was asked to write it. He was commissioned to write it by the Conservative cabinet. Um, you know, we, we, at the last meeting, um, Ravi Govindia actually said, you know, a, a responsible council has to, has to look at every opportunity. Um, but, you know, that wasn't commonly shared. Other councils around the country, and uh, Councillor Grimston, um, lately of your parish, now actually unfortunately not uh, in here, but, you know, has been an IDA peer uh, and can talk to you endlessly and us about the way in which consultation uh, has, been, uh, uh, has, has been carried out by other councils making difficult choices. We are not in the vanguard of consulting with local people in any size, shape or form. Other Conservative councils, other Labour councils, do it much better than us. So I'm afraid, however much you might find this a bitter pill to swallow, there has been secrecy. That paper was dated May. It was leaked not just to us, but it was also leaked to the papers. There has been a problem with the way in which consultation with local people has been conducted. Uh, and whether you like that or not, that is, tr that is true. Now, I just want to talk a little bit about some history because there's also been the accusation banded around fairly extensively this evening uh, and also on the, uh, on the lovely Street Life website that this is an entire thing whipped up by Sadiq Khan to, I don't know, variously scare school children and stop them from sleeping at night or to scare local people into voting for him to protect his very, very, very slim majority that, uh, that he sits on. Well, the bit of history that I'd like to just refresh people's memory over is the timing of when we've had significant cuts announcements um, in previous councils. There was a council election in 2002. Funnily enough, uh, the uh, situation that arose then with the Battersea Zoo arose soon after in 2003. No link at all to a general election that I'm aware of there. 2006, uh, which was when I was elected, so I remember this really quite intensively, and we ended up with a petition with 20,000 names on it, um, and at the time, in fact, it was Councillor Grimston who said, this is scaremongering of the first degree, uh, and was in all the local papers saying that it was all complete nonsense about uh, closing the museum, but in the end, the museum was closed in Garrett Lane, and bizarrely, it was then moved to the library in West Hill, and the library in West Hill was then moved into the museum. Uh, and just to correct something that Councillor Govindia said earlier on this evening, actually we have closed a library. Uh, the Allfathing Library may no longer look like a library to any passerby, but it is actually closed. It's not used by us as a library. In 2010, in 2010, uh, just after another council election, and again 2006 to 2010 actually was completely linked with an election, but the, the cuts announcement came after that, and that related to the libraries. Uh, and there was a long campaign uh, from a lot of people across the whole of the borough. Northcote Library was agreed that it would not be uh, touched. All of the opening hours were reduced. The York Gardens Library uh, was reincarnated in a different way. Um, but what a success, and I will return to Greenwich Leisure Limited and why they are such a success, because I think when they bid, when they bid for the contract, I don't think anybody uh, on your side of the chamber expected them to beat the private sector companies, let alone beat our own in-house bid. But they beat all the other bids into a cocked hat. So let's have a little discussion about staff mutuals. Why was it that we had to wait until after Greenwich Leisure Limited had won the contract for managing our libraries, which they are doing extremely successfully. I think we can at least all agree on that. We had to wait until after that for the concept of the staff mutual, which some of us on this side had been promoting prior to that contract being entered, to then come across the active consciousness of the entire council chamber. Now, what is it about staff mutuals that makes them so successful and so potentially successful, and in fact something that we should have done before, and is a great way for us to go forward into the future, and answers a number of the points that people are making about innovative ways to manage services going forward? Well, they are subject to an entirely different set of financial arrangements from both private companies and local authorities. They have different VAT arrangements. They have different corporation tax arrangements. They don't pay dividends to shareholders. And unlike us, they are able to access charitable funding. Now, the larger the body, 
the greater the economies of scale, Greenwich Leisure Limited is well known in the field of leisure management. Um, and so for us to try and compete with Greenwich Leisure Limited, I hardly need to remind everyone here that it was, of course, a Labour Council that set up Greenwich Leisure Limited. The largest body with the greatest diversity of services is going to have the greatest chance not only of achieving those economies of scale, but also of being able to bid for services elsewhere. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we don't manage our own leisure centres. So including a top-class athletics track within, let's call it Wandsworth Leisure Limited, just for the sake of a phrase, is going to make us into a much more viable opportunity. It, it will make, it, uh, well, I'm very confident, unlike you, in Richard Pettigrew's ability to continue to bear down on that uh, gap in income. And I feel that by next year, he'll be in a position um, to have closed that gap. But in any case, half of the uh, members of your group this evening who've been speaking, Councillor Tracy, have all been saying that they hope um, the Athletics Track in-house bid or the mutual bid is successful. So I'm not quite sure whether you're in a different place than they are. But we need, we need it in, within the, um, the, the staff mutual because I want to see this council, rather than being on the back foot and behind everybody else, I want to see us bidding for work elsewhere. I want us to be as widely known in the field of leisure management as Greenwich Leisure Limited. I want us perhaps to come in and bid for services elsewhere where we're underestimated and we win running those services. I'd like to see the management of our libraries coming back inside and perhaps of our leisure centres because that will give us what we need in terms of that different approach to running services. Um, I want to see the South Mutual as a real success and I'm extremely surprised, I'm extremely surprised that having, I thought, achieved a degree of support for the Staff Mutual with internal shadow running before it goes out to um, running properly and then to being tendered against everything else, I'm really surprised that you're not supporting it, helping it to make it fly and have that diversity of services that it deserves. So yes, I'm going to criticise you for not being strong enough on a affordability, not, being not fighting against your inherent secrecy, your lack of consultation, but worst of all, I'm going to criticise you for weakening what could be a really, and I still hope it is, a really successful staff mutual. Please vote for this reference start motion. Thank you very much. Councillor Cook. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, well, tonight's performance has uh, been a very interesting insight into the psychological state of the party opposite. Um, we've seen, we've seen, we've seen oftentimes their refusal to face reality. The prime example, which uh, overshadows everything, is their refusal to face the uh, the reality, the financial mess they left us all. Uh, they've now, they've now. They've now, you say that every time, you say that every time, they have now extended that, they've now extended that approach, they've now extended that approach to tooting track, a complete uh, inability to face reality. But they've actually gone further, they've gone further, because they are now actually constructing their own reality. Um, a parallel universe, despite the fact that I, officers, third parties, all of us have told them what the facts of the situation are. In verbally and in writing. They have no excuse. But they've now embarked on this totally new journey of theirs where proposals mean whatever they want them to mean. It's just like Alice and her words. No matter that this might alarm residents, no matter that this will cause anxiety to users of the track, and welcome to those this evening who are here to see this debate, um, including schools, primary schools, uh, well-established running clubs, no matter that it will worry the staff who you hypocritically praise but you have destabilized them yourselves with the way that you have spread these rumors of closure. You don't care about that. If you cared about that, if you cared about that, you would not have been spreading these rumors. We've even had, we have even had, we have even had, we have even had Labour councillors assuring pupils in primary schools that they will do everything in their power to save the track. Absolutely disgraceful. But it's not under threat. I'll repeat that. It's not under threat. It is not under threat. You should read it. You should read it. You clearly haven't. It is not under threat. We are government. taking active steps to secure its future. The facts are very, very clear. It's Councillor Cook's currently speaking. Please give him a...
I'll continue, Mr. Mayor, but uh, with, uh, if, uh, if I may have a little extra time, Mr. Mayor, because I, I, they, are, they are interrupting me at every, at every, every moment. Um, the, might, fact, the, fact the, situation, the facts of the situation are incredibly clear. Very, very simple. We believe there is scope to make further savings uh, while at a minimum, and this is crucial, at a minimum, maintaining the current service levels through exploring possibilities with other operators, which may include the existing staff team, who I agree are excellent. So, there is no suggestion of closure or lowering of current service standards. Their amendment deliberately confuses dates, sequences and conflates issues and desperately tries to create the impression of closure. Any reader of Councillor Jones' recent communications to the residents of Fursdown, modestly addressed dear Fursdown, who has knowledge of the facts, can immediately see the deep cynicism of these tactics. By deliberately mixing up those sequences, and we've seen it tonight, uh, they seek to completely uh, undermine and give a false impression of what is actually happening here. Let's be clear, we are incredibly fortunate in having two Olympic standard running tracks in this borough. How many inner London boroughs could say the same? It's a fantastic position to be in. So, it's an entirely reasonable position to, uh, to say, well, do we really need two tracks? Sure, we've had that thought. It's in the report. We've been perfectly open about that. But at a moment's further thought, simultaneously, showed that facility share with Battersea wouldn't work, both tracks are heavily used, they're very popular, and there's little spare capacity, so that wouldn't work. And as Councillor Caddy was saying, having invested so much money in the facility, why on earth would we then want to close it? Well, of course we wouldn't. Our efforts, quite obviously, are directed at keeping the track open and ensuring it continues to play a very prominent role in the sporting life of this borough. And it's one of the key reasons why, not once, but twice, we have won the, uh, the London Youth Games. The first time an inner London borough has ever done that. And I will not take lectures about sporting facilities from the party opposite, because we have a tremendous record. Um, they have, of course, here backed themselves into a ridiculous corner. We, we, can, we, can, we can see the gyrations, the backflips they're all trying to do, to try and justify, justify their behaviour. Um, they, they have... Oh, wait a minute, uh, Councillor Cook, well, I, 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 I'd rather not thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd rather you, continue. I've been un interrupted a lot. Sorry, he's not um, willing to give way. They, they have dug themselves into a tremendous hole. Anyone with any common sense would have stopped digging long ago. Um, they called a public meeting on the false pretext of closure. And they were then forced to acknowledge that it wasn't actually on the cards. And now they're trying to spin their way out of it in any way they possibly can. Uh, by spreading all manner of rumours. Well, if you're slightly confused by some, some of the things you've heard, uh, I would suggest that you're meant to be. Because what they're trying to do is hoping that by generating all this spurious nonsense, enough people will say, ah, maybe there's something in this, and then they'll be able to further exploit the confusion that they have created. But not everyone's taken in. Uh, as my colleague Councillor Dunn wisely pointed out, people tend to see through it. I have here a tweet from a Labour supporter, or I should say a former Labour supporter, um, who, having attended that public meeting, um, said this. In the last week, I've been bombarded with, been bombarded with emails from HHH, Fern Hill Harriers, uh, friends asking me to sign petitions, turn up for photo shoots, go to meetings because the local MP and some councillors had informed them that the Tooting Athletics track was being closed. I have always voted Labour. Uh, and then they go to block capitals, not anymore. What a waste of time and effort organised on the whim of a local politician with an agenda to attack the council and improve his standing. Maybe a smokescreen for possible negative publicity around at the moment. This is about three weeks ago. Not sure what that means, but I, I, could, I, could give, I could give Sadiq Khan a call on his mobile and ask what it might mean. But, uh, or, or... <laughs> <laughs> so he probably wouldn't, wouldn't want the interruption. Or this, or this, from the chair of Tooting Commons Mac. It would be helpful if information was properly read and understood before Twitter storms are unleashed. Campaigns are all very well, but when they're on a false basis, they are extremely wasteful of time. Yeah. Wise words. This was echoed at the OSC, uh, where those of us who were there were able to hear a blazing row in the corridor between members of the deputation, uh, and clearly they had absorbed what we'd been saying at the committee and realised there was no threat of closure. Uh, they throw up all sorts of uh, spurious issues, touched on again tonight. They keep banging on about affordability. Say so it won't be affordable. 
They're wrong. We can the define the pricing as we do with our leisure centres. Simple. They say service levels will decline. Also wrong. We will define the service levels. Uh, they complain we didn't consult. Well, how could we consult on a paper before it was published or even been endorsed by the committee? Had we done so, they would have complained we were jumping the gun and not respecting the committee. And they would have been right. So, the only reason people feel there hasn't been consultation is because the Labour Party preempted the committee with their public meeting. So they're trying to have it both ways. Again, they complain it'll be a private company. Well, maybe, maybe not. It could be a social enterprise, it could be our mutual, and interestingly, the structure most likely uh, to, uh, that, uh, that they will adopt it currently involves a private company. But the pinnacle of incoherence in this, uh, this amendment uh, comes toward the end. They say it's a monopoly service in the area. Well, this is uh, surreal. What do they want? An Olympic-sized running track on every corner? Um, maybe they should widen their definition of area, uh, and they'll find, as I said, that we have got two Olympic standard tracks in the borough. Not bad, I would suggest, uh, but the best bit's at the end. Offers too, I'm quoting here, offers too high a risk of going against public needs for affordable services. Uh, no, I don't know what it means either. Um, it just shows the confusion and the muddled thinking that they are indulging in. Um, we've dealt with the affordable bit, but the too high a risk? Well, they uh, suddenly seem to have taken against private companies, and they're very, very confused on that point. Um, returning to Councillor Jones's message uh, to uh, the people of Thursdown, she, uh, she very gravely, solemnly um, says to them that, uh, that, uh, that her party were against uh, the, um, the attempt to go down the private route. Uh, and then the tone of her email lightens somewhat as she goes on to deal with the proposals for the cafe on Tooting Common. And guess what? Uh, she cheerfully informs residents that there is a tender out for a 15-year lease and which, and I quote, the current manager or another company could be successful in winning and wonders if perhaps someone out there would like to bid. And the previous OSC, she was very, very keen on competition. Uh, the, the, in the incoherence... The incoherence, the incoherence is absolutely staggering. Sorry, uh, Councillor Cook, do you want to hear... Uh, no, 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 thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yep, the uh, incoherence is completely staggering. Uh, it, we'll see how the track develops, but it's perfectly possible that an operation comes forward uh, and, says, um, and says, well, we would quite like to run a cafe uh, alongside the track. Will Councillor Jones be saying to that operator, you can run the cafe, but you're not running the track? So, um, I'd just like to... Uh, Close with a word on uh, integrity, which my colleagues have touched on as well. I mean, it, 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 demeans, um, it demeans, it demeans, it demeans politics. It demeans politics. It demeans politics. It demeans politics when they behave in the way that they have done. They have whipped up uh, concern amongst residents, I think most disgracefully amongst primary school children, with false claims. Their handling of this issue has been dishonest, disorganised, disingenuous, misleading, opportunistic, utterly cynical, and wrong on virtually every fact, and they should be ashamed of themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, uh, Councillor Daly. Um, I believe you shut my colleague down when she was uh, asking for a point of personal explanation, which she's entitled to. She didn't actually explain what she was doing. Uh, she was actually shouting, it appeared to me, which was... Uh, but if I wish to make a point of personal explanation, please do. There is a big difference between a cafe and a facility that serves 60,000 people. Most, I'm sorry, most that's of out whom of order. are children. Thank you. Will you kindly sit down? Right. The, the matter now before the council is the reference up amendment proposed by Councillor Leonie Cooper and seconded by Councillor Anderson as set out on pages 47 48 of the agenda concerning the Tooting Beck Athletics Track. So please indicate by a show of hands those in favour of the amendment. And those against.
and any abstentions? Is the paragraph therefore received by the same numbers? Right. Thank you.